going on, guys? Anthony Bion is here from Mission Start Podcast. I'm just chilling. Um, just chilling until you know we have everything set up. Uh, we're still waiting on one person, but um, yeah, just kind of hanging with the chat as it will. So what's going on, peoples? Let's see who's in here. Ah, Mubot. You're always a delight to see, and also. Shoutouts to Common Rider, aka our MSP social social media person. Um, so I'm just kind of chilling here until we start the show. Hanging with the chat, see what's going on. Watching CEO. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna be doing this entire weekend. So kind of been a big week this week. Yeah, kind of been a big week this week. And a lot of things. Um, I mean I. I can't lie, the fact that the biggest news yesterday was uh, very political. Uh, okay, that's cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming in. Um, yeah. Definitely been watching CEO this entire weekend uh, and working on other website stuff. So, um, in the meantime, let's see. Give me a minute, guys. Let me just see where he's at. Uh, so... Um, what can I say about this this week? This week for me has been interesting. I think the fact that the the whole uh uh having every you know having all people who are gay be married in in the nation is incredible. I had never that that would happen in a while, but it happened yesterday. My boss actually brought it up to me. It's hey, did you find this out? I was like, what? And I looked. I was like, holy crap! This happened. This thing is actually real for once. So. Man. There we go. Yeah. Kind of better. I don't know. Nah, still working at this thing. <sighs> I, no, I really should invest in one of those light reflectors. Like just reflect light off. So it won't be just like, oh, hey. You know, big ass light. At, like right next to me for no good reason. Um, but yeah, um, just some, some news topics for this, this past week in gaming that are interesting. Um, let me see. Yeah, I got some stuff to talk about. Actually, part of it is actually political, so it's kind of funny how that ties that ties it in. Um, so there's some interesting stuff coming down the pipeline for MSP. Um, and as far as when that will happen, um, it's in the works. I've been, I've been taking a small break for the past two days, not really working on it, but uh, I got some we got some stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, you know what? Actually, uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I should just have this as, as my as my kind of uh, pre-show, pre-game show, uh, image show, and then when we go live, they can see my face. So I kind of did in reverse. Um, let's see a minute. Okay. Um, where is my friend? Where are you, Greg? You still having issues with the Xbox One? Oh no! It might just be me this morning, then, guys. So, which is fine. I, I've done shows in the past where it's just me and talking about stuff. Um. But yeah, we got some stuff today this week we can talk about on the show. We got stuff on Apple taking away the Confederate flag and their games. Nintendo rumored to be working with Disney and Amazon. Uh, Bungie responding to Disney expansion controversy. Um, and FF7 remake will have new characters alongside like other issues already with the game. Which is crazy to think about because like, well I'll get into it later on but... There's some stuff that happened with FF7 where I was like, yes, I'm glad it's announced, but now seeing what's happening behind the scenes, it's like, ah, I don't know if this game's going to come out in a while. We'll get lucky if we even see this thing in 10 years. <laughs> Another 10 years. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if it was worth it. I mean, it, it was announced, it's cool, but like now it's like, I, it, it will happen, I guess, eventually. I'll explain more later in the show. Um... Let's see. 
Um, F S M equals the new the new Last Guardian. I would say possibly. It I'll I'll explain my reasonings for it, but it's possible, very possible. It could definitely be that way. Um, but yeah, that'd be it's yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there. I know. Um, but yeah, um, definitely got some good stuff for this week. Um, also, uh, I need to figure out, I'm going to redesign the actual stream format for this because I just realized, like, when I was trying to figure out the, uh, news ticker, apparently, I thought I figured it out, but I, I didn't, but, like, apparently what happens is, like, every time I switch a page on here, it restarts the ticker, and it's like, oh, well, that kind of makes it useless then. Because, like, the idea of the ticker, the, the, the ESPN bar and below, was to have, like, um, they have, like, the, uh, the kind of ESPN news style, but for gaming news. And it only works, it works if it's on a single page for the entire stream. But because I'm switching from B-roll footage to uh, pages, it's, I don't know, it's, uh, it doesn't work, like, doesn't work as, as I hope to. So I'm going to go and change that, the design a bit, so, which is fine kind of bummed out but you know it's whatever so yeah something to fix just like here after the can you hear the music is my question and if it's coming in pretty low let me know and why I, and why I do that I saw that some people sh tweeting about CEO already do 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 and it'll be awesome. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> ah, that's crazy. Uh, so, um, as far as my plans for this weekend, um, nothing really much going on for me right now. Again, just kind of chilling for, for for the weekend. I wasn't going to San Francisco for this uh, to, to go to Game Center, but um. I decided against it just for the fact that, um, what was it? Like, uh, the fact that, you know, it is, it is, it's Pride Weekend, it's this weekend, on top of the big announcement that happened yesterday, and I'm like, if I try to go to get to Game Center through San Francisco, I will have a hard time just getting to point A to point B just because it's going to be so crowded. And there's going to be parties everywhere, which I'm, you know, I have no problem with, you know, freaking party the, you know, as much as you can for this weekend. But man, I'm not sure if I will ever get through everything or able to get through in in, uh, in the span of time I want to. I might be able to, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to, so. um, So yeah, I think I decided not to go, unless like somebody picks me up and drives me there and back, and that's cool, but probably not. Probably can get, stay home and chill and work on stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Cool. Ugh. Let's see. Who else is in here? Eh, just you. Alright. So, let me see what the update status is. Um, man, this Xbox might be dead. That'd be kind of crazy to think about. Microsoft. I will say one thing about Xbox and Microsoft. They really turned it around in a year of what happened last year. They are really turned it around in terms of like people who want to have a better console and at the same time like catering to the audience. Um, because there was a lot of bad shit that happened with Xbox One. Okay, he's on. Cool. Let's see. Let's 
Let's see. You are alive. Hello. Let oh me. Yeah, that was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um. Let me just <clears throat> adjust something real quick. Oh my god, my heart is just like racing a mile a minute over here. Mm. Let's see. I just need to Actually no, I should I should put it at the max or the same. Just adjust an audio level. So Okay. Um I do hear an e echo. So I wonder. Can you? I wonder. Can you lower down your mic on your end? Oh, the mic. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oops. Wrong button. Okay. Right test. 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 Okay. Much better. Yeah. Sorry. I forgot. I forget that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, that was weird. Somebody tried to call me and just hang up. Oh well, it's actually Jeremy. Huh. That's interesting. Oh, he's calling me. All right, hang on, guys. Let me have to take, have to take this call. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys what I got and I'm gonna fix in a minute. But yeah, let's uh, not delay anymore. Let's get the show rolling and uh, let's begin the festivities. Let me stop the music or pause it. All right, going to what's my thing? Right, here we go. Everybody, this is Anthony Beyond from Mission Star Podcast, and we are live. We are back with another episode of Mission Star Podcast. Now, um, the thing that uh, it's funny. So, like the last last week or the past week, we had our, our like our big E three uh, podcast. That it was too much E three. It was too much to handle for one person or for two people, for that matter. Um, it was a lot. A lot happened, and we are now rested from everything that happened, and now it becomes the aftermath of E3. But joining me to talk about this, sorry, so, good morning. Yes, um, joining me to talk about this week's news and everything in the game industry is Greg Deeds. Hello, everybody. Yep, uh, it's the morning. We're still waking up, um, and yeah. Yeah, I taking my uh, I taking my Xbox One over to Buddy's house last night so we could play some games and 
I was just now hooking it up, and all of a sudden, like, it wouldn't turn on. Like, it would turn on like it was getting power, but it wouldn't show up on my TV, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, nothing changed. I couldn't figure it out, so I was looking up on forums, and one guy was like, sometimes the power brick isn't getting enough power from the outlet you have it in, so try to switch to another outlet and see if that works, and that's exactly what I did. In the same power strip, by the way. Mm. Weird. But I switched it, and, uh, worked just fine. I was like, Jesus, that's... Such a simple, I, like, simple tiny thing that nobody, I think, would think of if trying to hook up a big item like an Xbox One, so. Yeah, definitely. There's one thing that Microsoft is known for is, like, their their consoles take up a lot of power. Like, just, like, a, a big-ass brick that you have to attach to your 360 or to your Xbox One or whatever. Yeah. Well, but, uh, yeah, I think we should get started with the news. Um, Let's see, where do I want to go first? I think I will start with some Final Fantasy news because I feel like we should go light first and go into the heavy stuff later on. <laughs> As we're waking up. Yeah. Our brains work, working and whatnot. Definitely. Okay, so here's an interesting thing. Five, they they have said that Final Fantasy VII Remake will not have new characters, which is a great thing. But also, uh, something else happened that I, I find it funny, but also like... This game will not come out for a very, very long time. And here's here's what happened. Okay. The director of, of this game didn't know he was going to be the director of this game in the first place. He was busy working on Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 15. Um, he was informed um, about being the director of this game when he saw the trailer. And nobody, I guess, at Square Enix told him, like, or they had no, no official agreement, I guess... Of him being the director of, of the game. So. Like he has now. Kingdom Hearts 3. Final Fantasy 7. And Final Fantasy Remake on his plate. Um, and. Numura has. A lot he has to go through. And it just makes me wonder now. This game. We probably won't see for a very very long time. Like That's something I was pointing out during the E3 conference. Was like. Everyone's getting all up in arms about it. But. It's at least three or four years away. And if it's that far away, will it, like, two years from now, will people still be excited about it? I think there still be excitement for the game. But I think it's going to be, again, testing the patience of everybody to how long are you willing to wait for this game? Because as of right now, after finding out the information, I feel like this game won't come out for another ten, five, six years. I want to say ten, but... I would I wouldn't go that far. I would not say ten years. That seems that seems way too far out. I'm I'm going as far as four years. Four years, yeah. and I could be wrong. I just feel like with everything that this guy is working on, like Kingdom Hearts three is still in development. Square uh, Final Fantasy fifteen is still in development as well. Um, and these games have been long rumored to be in development for so long since we saw them last year at E three. So. Well, here's, here's my thing, is that an original title with brand new characters, storyline, game mechanics, built from the ground up, You like it takes like four years to make, four or five years to make. How hard, or how long could it possibly take a remake? Now, I know that, he, that they're building everything from scratch, that they're, uh, you know, all, everything's going to look better, it's going to be a slightly different story just because they're going to make it a little bit more streamlined, I guess, or some shit. Mm-hmm. Or maybe add everything else. You know, I don't know. But it, the story is already there. Is my point. So, like, it can't take that man. It can't take that long, unless you know Square Enix is just putting like very little money into it because they don't think it's going to do anything. Right. Um. It's going to depend how long this, this game is going to be. It depends on like a lot of things. Um. But we'll see. I think I have a feeling that like. If Square Enix pulls out the right, I mean, if if, if Kingdom Hearts three is great, if Final Fantasy fifteen is great, then I have faith in Final Fantasy seven is going to be good. Um, people will will start to to worry if one of those two games ends up being not great or okay. Um, but it, it's time will tell. But like again, I think the guy is going to it's taking up three huge. We're talking huge projects that uh, yeah. is. 
it's very it's, it's money making, but it's, it's a make or break thing for for Square Enix. So, ah, it's a make or break thing for Square Enix as well. If some if, 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 if it's a situation where he doesn't start working on Final Fantasy VII remake for like another couple of years, trying to push out these other titles, then I totally agree with you about it taking a really long time before it comes out. But um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, man, like. Well, def- if, if if that's like, <clears throat> I swear to God that Sony. That's why I put. That's why I didn't say Sony won the conference because the two biggest things that they had a lot of like, oh holy shit about was the Final Fantasy VII remake and and Shenmue Three. And the thing that I pointed out with both of those titles is they're a really far way out. Shenmue 3 hasn't even started work getting worked on yet, other than maybe the story has already been written by the guy who created it. Um, and the Final Fantasy 7, it was just literally an announcement. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, the promise is there, but, like, outside of, of the game, out, out of gameplay, like, there's, there's definitely some speculation as far as, like, what the game's going to be or if it's going to be the same at all. Um, I mean, the thing is, though, the game, the, the, the story, the scripts, everything's done. That part is is already finished. Um, in terms of like how the game plays and the aesthetic of it is going to be something interesting that's going to happen, you know. So, what we'll wait and see? I mean, like this game could be completely the same game that came out in nineteen ninety seven. I want to say not ninety six, um, but it could be completely something totally different um, in this day and age. So it might be Final Fantasy thirteen battle system. Who knows? Which I don't, which I don't mind to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's Final Fantasy Seven in, in a nutshell. I think Final Fantasy Thirteen's worst, or least, least biggest issue was it's the best part about the game was its battle system. Is what I'm trying to say. And I agreed. Out of my mouth. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So uh, let me let's let's go take the um. Let's go. Let's go find out what's happening at Bungie. So, <laughs> oh oh, Bungie. Um, so, okay. Recently, they've been talking about some stuff for Destiny that they were showing off. Um, and it was, you know, at E3, they showed off the trailer for The Taken King, the new DLC for, um, Destiny. Um, recently, they had came out and said some things about what's included in the game. Um, but at a pro... I watched the No, uh, their podcast about this, and their, um, well, not the No, but uh, Funhouse guys mm-hmm. talk about this, so pretty well-versed as to what the hell is going on. Definitely, definitely. And the thing about this is that there were some things that were said during that interview and um, that ticked off a lot of people off. Uh <laughs> Like, uh, one of the things that I think I misconstrued is that, you know, and I'll have the quote actually right here. Give me a minute. Let me find that quote. Uh, okay, I don't have that quote. Okay. Anyways, but long story short, they said that they were um, going to have uh, – they were trying to defend the, the price for their DLC. But also at the same time, like, there was a quote saying, like um, – you know, you be throwing forty dollars for these awesome three emotes that we're having in this DLC. Um, not to mention the fact that in this DLC, you're also purchasing old content at the same time too, or which is kind of weird. Uh, it's for people who didn't purchase the other, didn't purchase it before. Ah, uh, say so gotcha. Okay. Well, here's the thing that a lot of people have to understand when it comes to Bungie, when it comes to any like the thing about Destiny is it's it's designed to be this type of game activision and bungie work together to make a game that's supposed to last 10 years and make them a lot of money like the like the call of duty franchise unfortunately that does segregate a certain group of people who want to play the game um when everything's said and done when the game's over when destiny 2 is about to come out they will, I mean, they will have. You'll have spent like close to a grand on the game, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. But this is a thing that that a lot of people have to understand. Your relationship with uh, video game companies is strictly business. 
Uh, you've heard it a thousand times, Anthony. I've probably said it in the past, and it took me a while to understand this. You are a consumer. Um, but in that same vein, your relationship is strictly business. They make product, you buy product. If you don't like said product, don't buy said product. It's yeah. as simple as that. Agreed. Sitting there on the internet and bitching and complaining about it is not going to change anything. It's not going to stop them. Plus, uh, there was a story that one of the guys talked about where um, he uh, he was talking to a business guy. And the guy said that people, generally speaking, are willing to forego things that they didn't like if they are given something free. The story that he gave was he was working at a sandwich shop. I don't know what sandwich shop. It doesn't really matter. Woman comes in, orders a sandwich with extra mayonnaise. Uh, she's really rude, so he takes the he make when he makes the sandwich. Um, he puts in like a like a like a half an inch thick layer thing of mayonnaise on it. I mean, it's like stupid amount. She comes back in, slams it on the counter, and goes, "What the fuck is this?" and starts berating him. And he she go, he goes. Sorry, ma'am, I don't, I, I don't understand how that happened. I will remake your sandwich for you. So he goes and makes it normal, like with the normal amount of mayonnaise. And uh, he goes, and here's a free pickle. The pickles are like six cents a pop, you know. They're not, they're not much. And he got away with doing, like he got away with a joke on top of like, uh, like being a dick to her be just because he gave away a free pickle to her he got away with all of that like she walked out of the store happy didn't realize that she was the butt of the joke and everything was good and, you know hunky dory and unfortunately that's kind of activision and bungie's business model right now for destiny um whether you like the content or not hey we'll give you a free emote if you shut up about it all right i don't know it just it seems like recently their business practices with their DLC and charging how much they're charging for their content, I feel like, um, has not been very well versed with the fans and also kind of just not. I don't know. It, it just this, it doesn't sit right for me. And like the other thing that I kind of want to bring up too is like, I mean, it was only a time exclusive, but this was a very weird thing they did was like they had a Red Bull like time exclusive content in the game. I'm not sure if that was charged or not. I'm, I need to go back and check, but like, um, things like things like that, on top of what they're already uh, facing right now, I feel like with the prices that you're, you're charging for, I think it's reasonable. But at the same time, like I feel they're like absolutely reasonable. They're absolutely reasonable. This shit is not cheap to make. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, like, not, yeah, and that's that's the thing that people have to understand, like. You buy a game for 60 bucks, you, like, they better hope that it sells a lot of fucking copies. Because that movie costs way more, or that movie, that game costs way more than 60 bucks to make per pop. Like, that's, most games are like that nowadays. Mm -hmm. Very few games are, oh, sorry, um, are cheap enough in that regard, unless they're like indie made or some shit like that. Uh, and very few games that get made for a lot of money uh, do well. Uh, especially new IPs. Like, it's a gamble nowadays to new do a new IP. Because, like, a game like Battleborn, like, they're going to sell that shit from, from the makers of Borderlands. From the makers of Borderlands. Why? Because that's the only way it's going to sell properly. Right. Honestly, I... Alright, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, there's just... And that's... That's just Bungie's, like, MO right now is that we have to make money off of this, and we can't give too much away for free, so what do we do? And, th and th this is all coming, and like, I'm defending Bungie right here, and this is coming from a guy who didn't like Destiny. <laughs> right. Like, I, 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 just feel, I just feel the way that they're handling their situation with their money pricing and everything is I think that they are missing the mark on it. Um... I understand that money, uh, the games cost a lot of money, which I'll discuss um, in in a bit. But um, like, I, like the way they're handling everything, I feel like they've are are taking missteps to it. I think that maybe I don't know. <laughs> I I just I just feel like like I'm I'm reading this stuff 
uh, about what the fans are reacting to, and I agree. I'm just saying, look, when you get when you get a base game, when you buy a base game, it, it should come with everything that you want to come with it. DLC that adds on to it, sure. If you want to buy the DLC, it's not it's not you're not forced to it. You're not you know nobody putting a gun to your um gun to your to your head to to buy the game, but like. The thing about it is, like, it feel it feels it doesn't feel right, you know. Like, it doesn't feel like if I really love this game and I and I want to keep playing it and I have to buy this other content with it, which I can if I want to, I can choose not to. But at the same time, like, I feel like they're kind of gouging their customers. I don't know. This this is how I feel. But like again, it's not. But you, you don't have to. That's the thing. You don't have to. So. Uh yeah. So Bungie, Destiny, yeah. still, I mean, still a thing that everybody talks about nowadays. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people will sit there and say that, like, and we've discussed this with uh, other franchises too. Um, I deserve this. I deserve that. I'm, I'm a consumer, and I, I need this, and I, and it, it it's unbelievable to me that that's, that that's a way that people think. Like, you don't, you don't deserve anything. Actually, you. You, uh, you're a consumer. If you want the thing, then cool, but you don't deserve the thing. Like, that entitlement shit drives me nuts. And I hear a lot of Destiny people saying that, like, well, I've been here since day one, so I deserve blah, blah, blah. I don't care how long you've been here. That doesn't matter for shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. Um, but yeah, that's Destiny. Uh, before we go on to our next topic, shout out to everybody who are joining us today. Uh, thank you guys for coming in. We do the show every morning, Saturday morning, uh, 10 a.m., talking about all the latest gaming news uh, in the past week, and we talk about each subject. Um, yeah, so thanks, subscribe, and make sure to subscribe to our Twitch channel. Now, so I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave this last topic with this other topic I feel like that's connected to it because we're talking about how much money uh, these games are, uh, how much it is to, to make these games. So at E3, at the Sony press conference, one of the other big bombshells that was announced was the Kickstarter page for Shinmu 3. Um, and the, the that Kickstarter was then recently pretty much funded under 24 hours. The goal was $2 million. Um, the thing about it is that recently Yuzuki came out and said he wants $10 million to truly make it uh, to make a truly open world for Shinmu 3. Um, this kind of doesn't sit well with a lot of people because like they they, they were believed that the, the the initial money that was required two million would, would would help get the uh get the project the game off its feet and you know ready to be funded and, and headed out to production like the what well, you could say like it don't get me wrong I think what he's saying is like more money equals you know a better game but at the same time um there was also information coming out that Sony is also helping out, you know, finding this as well. And it, like the entire thing with Kickstarter was it's pretty much a way to um, to kind of see how much interest was in this game. And that kind of leads me to wonder, like, are are, are uh, if this is gonna how things gonna wor- uh, go in the future? Like, are are major companies gonna come out and say if you want to have this game made? donate such and such dollars to this Kickstarter so we know you're interested in. And it, it led me thinking to that. And it's kind of... It's, well, let, me, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Are you upset by that business model? Yes. And, the, and here's my reason why. It's because which, what, what they're asking for is they're asking for, 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 for fans to put in money already for, for a game to help raise that, raise that money to say, yes, we are interested in the game. Um, rather than saying, like, you know, I can simply ask people, like, are you interested in the game? And fans will probably say yes. But, like, making them pay already for, for or helping, help, helping out with the game um, on top of, you know, them making them already, that to me feels like, it's like pre-ordering. You know, like you pre-order games you're excited for, and that, and that money goes to, you know, GameStop or whoever. But I feel like I, I feel like the, it it just doesn't like I feel like the company is kind of ripping you off in a way because like what if you know this game doesn't do well you know like what if this 
Like how much? Like how much money are you gonna be asking me if I really want to put money into this game and from people's wallets? So, well, I okay. I I feel like you're only upset by it because you feel that like something like Sony, who's who's a big like Shenmue supporter, should be forking over the entire money to make the game. But for someone like Sony, and you have to put this in a business perspective, as we were talking about earlier, they are looking at it from a money-making perspective. Is it going to make more money than it takes than it took to cost? Than it, no, than it took to cost. Than it cost. To, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Right. Um, than it's going to take. Than it's going to cost to make. Whatever. Um, so, if let's say the game takes a game. Doesn't matter for Shenmue, any game. It's going to take 20 million in order to make. But Sony needs to know that there are at least 50,000 people that are interested in the game. You know, 50,000 times 60 is a good price. You know, like, how high is that? Um... You, you know, you, t- you, know you, make, you make that calculation, you see how much that costs... And then you go, and then you tell the you know company like, okay, here's your budget because you know we only have this much interest, or we're only showing this much interest. You know, like making a game, you're banking off of very few things. And for Shenmue, it's banking off of nostalgia. It's banking off of you know, is this a worthy title to make? There's a reason that Sega dropped it after the second one. You know, it did not sell well at all. Right. So, like if it's if that's the case, if uh, if they, if they're using Kickstarter as a way to gear like where the fans stand in making the game, then I think that that's actually a great way to to make the game. If Sony goes okay, so. There's, you know, we raised that two million pretty damn quickly. We brought it up to three million. There's clearly a lot of, a lot of people interested. So we'll take that three million. We'll give you another seven million to make the game, and then once the game's done, let's hope to make ten million plus. You know, like, that's their whole idea right now. Um, it's not that the fans' money isn't going towards the game. It's not that the, that cash isn't going to be used for something worthwhile it's just literally that it's just a way what's it called the banjo kazooie uh spiritual successor uh ukulele right um it it, it it's it's two or the each your own um also sorry sorry guys uh shame down for a minute there um i get it I get it, and this kind of reason why like Kickstarter is the way it is. Um, and uh, hang on a minute, yeah. Sorry, guys, in the, in the chat. Um, I was gonna say though, yeah, like it, I feel like um, I think your internet went down or something. Dude. It did for a second. It's back up. It is back up. Um, so hang on, you're just not alive for some odd reason. Um, I can fix that. yeah. Uh, but I was gonna say though, like. I get what you're saying, and I get kind of your argument for, for it, but like, I don't know. I think I think I think at some point though, I think that, um, it's it's really a test of like how much how much fans are willing to put up with games. Um, how much I mean not games. How much are of our fans willing to? Uh, yeah, give me a minute, guys. Ugh. Okay, right, sorry. <laughs> Actually, let me do something real quick, guys. Um, Take care of the chat. This shit's fucking stupid. <laughs> it's really starting to piss me off. Right. Like, I, you can call me thumb guy until you're fucking... <sighs> until you're blue in the face. I don't give a shit about that. But the second you start fucking spamming links and putting iOS tags in there, like, you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was going to say, like... um. Uh, Oh man, I just lost train of thought. Um, yeah, Greg can take care of that. Well, I kind of finished my thought on the whole thing. 
So I went to a fucking I went to a California fit yesterday to uh-huh. go swimming with some friends, and I've been I've lost fifty weights fifty weights fifty pounds <laughs> since I started swimming. I get nasty looks every day that I leave this house because I'm this size. Like it's just a thing I have to deal with, and I deal with it just fine. I, I want to be an entertainer on the internet, so I know I'm gonna get fat comments, fat looks, fat just fat discrimination, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I know it's gonna happen. I have thick skin. I do not care. Right. But, so you can come in the chat and say whatever you want about my weight. It does has no effect on me. But I swear to God, the second you start doing some stupid ass shit in the chat, you're getting banned immediately. Yeah, I think it's time to start putting into mods. Um, <laughs> yeah, you highlight the person's name and it and it says. Uh, like, you click on it, and it'll say, uh, OP user, I think. Okay, gotcha. All right. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, there it goes. All right. Boom. We have we have mods now. All right. All right, mods. All right, thank you. Thank you, mods. <laughs> All right, mods. You are now employed by MSP, and you are now uh, able to do what you will, as long as you keep it, you know, discreet. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I said, just, like I said, no links, no, no, like, no, no bullshit like that. It's just... You know, just chat. Right. You call me fat. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> other other than that, though, um, you know, again, thanks, thank, thank you guys for for joining the show, though. Um, it's the most we've had yeah. in a while. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for being here. Um, discussing games and whatnot. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so to get it back into to the whole like uh, Shenmue three being funded and just kind of kind of um that way of, of thinking, I get it. But like here's the, here's the difference, small like small independent companies can do it because they want to see if, if people have interest in you know fund the game. When big companies who have money like Sony, like Microsoft, well, th- well, first off, gotta stop right there. Sony was just giving them a stage to show it. That's it. No, well, they did, but they also came out and said like we were all, like we were also helping out with this with this project. They are fun. They're helping out sure, fun. They can, I mean, they can help just like any other of these, like I said, Bloodstained and, and Ukulele. But um, realistically, you have to look at it from the standpoint that Sony was primarily just giving them a stage in which to show that they had the game, the, the idea and the IP and everything ready to go. It was not like a, hey, so like we have time for the next 30 days for you to raise enough money to show Sony that they'll pay for the rest of the game. That's not what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Sony after all. Um, anyways, I think we should move on to the next topic at this point, so... There we go. Yay, we're back. All right. Uh, so, um... Okay, so let's move into... Let's move into Nintendo. Okay. Nintendo has been rumored to be working with Disney and Amazon um, and in terms of what exactly they've been planning to do. There have been some talks that they're probably working with Disney in terms of um, possibly being able to do a uh, uh, collaboration with uh, one of their theme parks. Like putting some Nintendo stuff in Disney's uh, theme parks, which would be really freaking cool um, if they did that. Um, The rumor of them possibly with Disney and Amazon leads me to believe that maybe some of Amiibo's Maybe they're gonna cross promote like Mickey into an amiibo. Maybe it's something where it's gonna be a special deal on Amazon. Um, so I, I that is interesting to think about, and there has been talked of them wanting a Nintendo Land of some sort. So that's pretty cool. I mean, like if it happens, that'd be freaking awesome. I mean, I think that having say N- Nintendo have its own theme park or a part of it in Disneyland, say that Mario Kart Eight. I thought they were doing it for a different theme park though. Um, that's I think it was like was it Paramount Studios or something like that? There were yeah, something in, like that. Was it yeah? Are they changing it now or something? Um, there's been rumors that they've been talking with um Amazon and Disney about something. Like, it's not completely confirmed yet, but my inkling is is thinking that they are wanting to team up with some some theme park, either you know whether it be Paramount Studios or Disney, to do something. Gotcha. Um, maybe both. Maybe maybe well, they. We've, we've, We've had this conversation about the theme park situation. I think it's a great idea for Nintendo. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, can you imagine? Like, I would love to have a Mario Kart, like, real Mario Kart. <laughs> that would be great. That would be fun. Or Luigi's Mansion would be real. So that would be pretty cool, too. 
Um, God, I just thought of something that would be amazing. Hmm. So, like, in the future, if we could have goggles mm -hmm. that, um, like, the, uh, what do they call the, the uh, Microsoft showed them off. The um, HoloLens, right? Where mm -hmm. the HoloLens is, a, is like a pair of glasses. Like, you just see holographic images on items through the lenses, but you can still see the world around you. <laughs> What if we could put those in a kart racing thing so that way we could play real life Mario Kart? And when you hit somebody with like a shell, it didn't actually spin them out; it just stop, it just slowed them down. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like, there's there's so many ideas that they can go with with Nintendo. Oh man, it's, it's awesome. It's great. So like, I, I'm kind of curious to see if these rumors are true that they're wanting to talk with Disney and Amazon. I can definitely see some with a theme park. I definitely can see some if they were to work with Amazon. Maybe some like Meepo exclusive thing. Um. Oh, what if here's another idea? Would be crazy. What if you brought your amiibo and like there's some special place in in Disneyland, uh, for your amiibo to put your your thing in? That'd be that'd be that'd nuts. Be that would be nuts. <laughs> be cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, but definitely. Let's see. All right, so going from something very light and very fun to something very serious. Um, so this past week, Apple. Uh, took down all games on their mobile store um, that had the Confederate flag, um, saying that the policy that the policy uh, was uh, it was uh, the flag right now. Is, you know, people right now are saying it's racist, the meaning. Here, here. And um, right. Apple uh, took it down from their games. And the thing is, though, is that um, when they did that, they forgot to they forgot to to take a minute to think that. For some games, um, it was used in a very historical context, like the, the Civil War games. Right, right, right. And some of the independent developers or developers of these games that were on uh, that, like, that... That's like that's like getting rid of Wolfenstein just because there's Nazis in it. Exactly. So, like, when Apple did this, they actually went back and they said that now, and this is from today, Apple limits Confederate flag policy to marketing material, banned games, back on the Apple App Store. So... It was a very knee-jerk reaction. It, Absolutely, it, yeah. it definitely is because of what's happening right now. And so... Um, I gotta go back. So I'm thinking... Yeah, so I was saying that, like, I think it's a great idea for racist material to be taken down. And if the racist material happens to have the Confederate flag in it, then absolutely. I think having having items in a game that have racist connotations okay <laughs> boy your internet is all over the place tonight isn't it oh yeah yeah I don't know what's going on but yeah continue your thoughts sorry you're, you're good now um go for it man <laughs> Sorry, I was I was looking at the chat. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> if uh, <laughs> if I'm trying to think of this properly because now I have to repeat it three times. It's fine to have the Confederate flag in your game if it's a symbol of like a bad guy. It's fine to have the Nazi symbol in your game if it's a symbol of the bad guy. Um. Right. So for do for those who are who are watching and um are getting um no stream uh, uh no no um screen refresh, it's it's on right now. So yeah, I mean like we live in a different time now. Uh, now like things that used to be okay back then aren't used are aren't okay now. And I think that what Apple did was a very knee jerk re knee jerk reaction. Um. I think that what they did was um, very just kind of a reaction to what's happening right now and what they're trying to appeal to, appeal, appeals, appeal to their people, appeal to their customers. But I feel like if they took a step back and realized that not all games on their app store are bad or, you know, they had the Confederate flag. No, they're on a, on a context, uh, on a context that they, um, uh, they should look at you know these are games that are historical references. It's like saying, it's like it's saying Family Guy. 
like there was an episode in Family Guy where like um, there you know they were in Germany. Brian and and uh, and Stu were in Germany. They were taking a tour, and like the the German um, the German uh, host that was you know showing everybody around Germany was like talking about its history, and like the other thing the other thing is that he he went on and say like or Brian said like you know wait what happened between this year and this year it's like oh nothing happened nothing happened like wait but didn't this happen and like explain the facts and like the the german guy just like totally denied the entire time and then at the end the you know joke he was like oh hell hitler at the very end so like yeah it's it's censorship if you think about it it, it is definitely censorship on apple's part but they are stepping back and are kind of looking back it's like okay we we fucked up so yeah, I think if Apple's very much adamant about like fixing problems, and they're like, "Hey, we just, you know, we we jumped to conclusions. Sorry about that." Like, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad thing to have certain symbols in your game as long as it's not promoting those as a good thing. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so you wouldn't want to play a game where suddenly Nazis and the KKK are the heroes. That's, that's ridiculous. Right. Definitely. Um. Okay. So. We'll see how that goes, but I'm pretty sure like Apple will get on their on their shit and fix that issue pretty pretty quickly. Um, so let's see. I think we have w- oh, two more things, and why to go? I'll probably try and get these quickly just because of internet being really finicky right now. Okay, so all right, we've always had um, we've had, for the past couple months, almost almost a full year, we had games come out. And uh, be broken, um, like you know, uh, was it Assassin's Creed Unity was one of them. Um, yeah, yeah. Master Collection was one of them as well. Uh, the newest victim in all this has been recently a lot more the PC ports. Mortal Kombat X was another one that came out that was broken, and um, now like we have Batman Arkham Knight. Now people are saying that. Uh, they are they're they're working on it. Um, it's not WB specifically, but it's a third party that's working on it uh, and fixing the game. Um, but this is just another line of just like games that are being ported to PC as of late, but also just a comparison yeah, yeah, yeah. to consoles have been not the greatest. And I've heard people saying that when this game came out on PC, that it was not playable. The frame rate was down. And everything about the game, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't play it at all. And there were even some speculation as far as, like, when they showed it off, like, uh, with the NVIDIA uh, card, with, with the NVIDIA Impressive Conference, or some with NVIDIA. They said, like, they, they saw 60 frames per second on the PC. When what really happened is that um, it was 30 frames, and they just speed up the video footage to make it look 60 frames. So there's been, there's as far as the PC ports, like, the PC ports have not been the greatest. Right. And... It it sucks for 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 a lot of people, so, um, and and they know it. Like WB came out and said, like they know they know what's up, so they're definitely looking into it and trying to fix it. But it's just it's annoying. Look, it's annoying that the fact that these games are being shipped broken. Every game we've had so far, every every other game that we came out so far has a day one patch. Or has something that they're, they're working on. Now, don't be wrong. It, it takes a lot of time and money to make these games. But at some point, like as a consumer, like I am annoyed for the fact that these guys are, are, are really hedging their bets with these games. And hoping that nobody sees them. When they know, and in fact, they know that these games are coming out broken. Well, I think that, for, well, okay. So, again, we have to do case-by-case basis sort of thing. You know, like, let's take Batman Arkham Knight, for example. First off, it was a broken PC port because it was a port. It was literally a port. Um, from the Xbox... Or not Xbox, but from the... Uh, from Rocksteady's side, they made the game for console. And they hired... And I don't remember the company's name, but they hired a company to do the PC port, and they did an awful fucking job. Uh, to the extent to where, like, you know, people have been asking for refunds. They've... You know, they've still... Uh, oh 
God, this is awful. Guys, I think we're probably going to end uh, the stream because, like, there's some way too many internet issues on my end, and I don't know why, so. But, um, before we go, uh, Greg, we, we, we tell your, your, your point about Batman before we end the show. We just have to take every game on a, we have to take everything on a case by case basis, and in the case of Arkham, it was. <laughs> okay. Wow. Night. Might... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. The port. Yeah, the port just had a city situation, and uh, it was unfortunate, and now it's uh, being fixed. Um. As for, like, Unity, it was bad out the gate. Like, the console version, every version was bad. Uh, and that's the thing, is, like, it sucks, and it's absolutely annoying, and in no way, shape, or form am I disagreeing that it's annoying, but at the same time, it's definitely not something that we should, um, like, every company's doing it, and it's a bad thing, like, it's always happening, like, it's... I don't know. Mm -hmm. And we also have to kind of just live with it. Like, that's another thing that sucks about it. We just sort of have to live with it. Like, yeah, if a company comes out with three games in a row that have glitchy issues and they have to come out with a patch, then possibly people are going to buy their fourth game, and that's that's an issue. But um, Or, like, with, with Arkham Knight, for example. Like, hey, the PS4 and PS or an Xbox One guys are getting to use it, and it's great, but PC people are pissed off. Like... Right. That's a that's a big issue that they're gonna have to fix. Uh, other than that, like, it's not every game. Uh, and you also have to put in perspective of what part of the game is it fucking up. Like for Unity, there was only a few game breaking glitches. For the most part, it was just graphical glitches. Like weird shit would happen. Um, this is something that when my brother interrupted the stream, uh, that we talked about, like, is it funny? Is it comical? It really did. Oh, we refresh. Um, so yeah, uh, guys, we tried. We, <laughs> the, the internet is just not working with me this morning. Um, so you know what? We're just going to end the show here. So, um, so yeah, Greg, where can I find you on the internet? <laughs> uh, Go to Google, search Chub Rock Geek, and you'll find all of my social media. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everything. All right, definitely. And I stream, and I, and I stream every Wednesday on Half Empty Energy Tank. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can follow me on Twitter at Defective Naruto. You could follow the work that me and Greg do on our website at MissionStarPodcast.com. Um, if you enjoy this podcast in its broken state, <laughs> speaking of broken games, um, <laughs> you, you can, you can follow us on Stitcher and on t iTunes for the audio version. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, you can also follow us on our website at missionsartpodcast.com and, um, and, uh, I was going to say, um, you can follow us there. You can follow us on, uh, iTunes Stitcher for, uh, the Carnival, which is a convention, t uh, news podcast that talks about everything we've been to uh the previous convention we've been to we talk about anime conventions comic conventions and all that good stuff definitely check out um definitely check out the con over which is also on itunes and stitcher and on our website um and if you enjoy entertainment hbo news comic book news um we are getting ready to go uh to comic-con pretty soon um uh, and i believe that be episode 100 will be there i believe but pretty freaking awesome um but yeah, like it's going to be, uh, you can follow that on Stitcher and on iTunes as well, as well as on our website. Um, and again, this stream was brought to you by MissionStarPodcast.com. Um, our neck, our usual streams are going to be for, for a reminder, our morning shows are always every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on this channel. Be sure to hit the follow button. Sorry that we don't have a sub button. Not yet. We're, we're working towards it. Uh, but be sure to follow on, the, on this channel. Um... And uh, I was going to say, oh, uh, we got more stuff coming down the pipeline. We got some uh, stuff for our, on our Twitch channel. We got stuff coming up on the website. Um, and we got some stuff coming down. So, And that, that is summer now. I have more time to work on stuff. But, yeah, we're going to be pretty busy. And next week, I believe, we'll be here. Yeah, we'll be here next week. It's just the following week I won't be here because of Comic-Con. Yeah. So with that, 
We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for – oh, yeah. Thank everybody for in the chat even though there were some issues. <laughs> All right. <laughs>